Hello, and thank you for watching uh, this presentation on computation-driven analysis of the model polyextrema tolerant fungus Exophyella dermatitidis. Um, we'll be talking a bit about its defensive pigment metabolic costs and human applications. My name is Wien Schroeder. I'm a PhD student at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, uh, studying under uh, Dr. Rajiv Saha in the Systems and Synthetic Biology Labor Laboratory. Uh, so this work is actually uh, published now in two peer-reviewed journal articles. The first is in iScience, uh, which talks about the model reconstruction and analysis, and is basically this presentation. Uh, the second is in Star Protocols, which is uh, an attempt to uh, more widely disseminate some of my computational tools, as well as to enhance the replicability of this study. Uh, so we'll start by addressing the motivation and research questions. Uh, then talk about the reconstruction of the genome scale model of exophyella that we did in this work, uh, and how we applied this to uh, study the shadow prices of the defensive pigment in order to study uh, the cost to the organism. Uh, then we did an analysis of melanogenesis, compared uh, humans and exophyella. And finally, uh, we're going to look at the ongoing and future work uh, in this particular study. So starting with the motivation and research questions, um, Exophyella has uh, three main different research applications. The first is as a pathogen. Uh, the second is as a model melanin system. Uh, we can see here the active site of tyrosinase, the key enzyme in melanogenesis. Uh, and across four different species, we can see that uh, tyrosinase has a fairly consistent structure, at least in the active site. And it, exophyella can also serve as a model polyextremo tolerant system. So exophyella has about 10,000 proteins, whereas humans have about 80,000 proteins, uh, which makes it a more tractable system uh, for study of melanogenesis. So we decided to go the melanogenesis study route and the model polyextremo tolerant system route. Uh, so the polyextremal tolerant characteristics of exophyella are conferred on it by two classes of pigments which it produces, melanins and carotenoids. Uh, so melanins are uh, a dark brown pigment uh, that can also be found in humans. Carotenoids are a pinkish pigment. Uh, melanins are going to be deposited in the cell wall, whereas carotenoids are going to be deposited in the cell membrane. So we have two research questions for this particular study. The first is what is the cost of these defensive pigments to the organism? Uh, we'll do this through a shadow price analysis. The second is can exophyella serve as a model organism for polyextreme repellent systems and for melanin producing systems? And we're particularly keeping an eye on its ability to serve as a model of a human melanocyte. The melanocyte is the cell in human skin which produces uh, melanins. So uh, we decided to solve these research questions through genome scale model reconstruction. Uh, this reconstruction is done by using information from publicly available databases in order to create a list of reactions which are catalyzed by the biological system in question. We then make sure that those reactions are element and charge balanced and add a pseudo-reaction called the biomass equation to simulate the growth of the organism in silico. Uh, we then put all this together in a stoichiometric matrix with uh, bounds on the reaction rates, and this is a genome scale model on metabolism. We'll then analyze that uh, model through various analysis techniques like flux balance analysis uh, in order to compare in vivo and in silico behavior and this becomes an iterative process as we try to continually improve the quality of our model. When we applied this workflow to exophyella, however, we noticed that only about 4% of open reading frames were annotated with enzyme commission numbers. Enzyme commission, or EC numbers, as we call them, uh, <coughs> are very useful tools for relating uh, gene, protein, and reaction. Uh, so because we were lacking a lot of this information, we decided to look at uh, phylogenetically uh, similar 
<clears throat> melanized fungi in order to try to um, fill in some of our knowledge gaps due to this low level of annotation. So this is the Astromycota phylum consensus um, phylogenetic tree. Uh, Exophyella is located in this little fan here, right here. Um, and so we searched literature for nearby related organisms which might have genome scale models uh, from which we could use data. And we found four uh, genome scale models for the related Aspergillus genus, uh, which is not too phylogenetically distant. So this is what, what we used to fill in our knowledge gap on of Exophyella. Uh, we did not use Baker's yeast, uh, Saccharomyces, because it is actually phylogenetically quite distant. Um, so we wanted to keep it to more similar organisms. So uh, we looked at the overlap and the enzyme commission numbers contained in the four Aspergillus models. Uh, we noticed about 300 core enzymes, which we added those reactions directly to our reaction list because they're uh, consensus to the four Aspergillus models. Uh, <clears throat> those enzymes present in three of four uh, we used as the first round of manual curation, as well as an application of our gap filling algorithm opfill. Uh, those common to two or four were used in the second round of opfill, and those common to three or four were used in the third round of opfill. And we did prune these databases a little bit to reduce the thermodynamically infeasible cycles to a manageable number so that we had computational tractability in our gap filling efforts. So uh, what Opfill is, is a gap filling tool which addresses some of the limitations of gap filling tools, uh, of current gap filling tools that are especially problematic for poorly characterized organisms like Exophyella. So this allows us to avoid thermodynamically infeasible cycles, as well as to guarantee that we're adding a global minimum number of new functionalities so that we can make a conservative reconstruction by not adding uh, too many reactions that are not already accounted for in our reaction list. So this is done by having a tick finding problem first to identify all potential thermodynamically infeasible cycles, followed by applying a connecting problem in order to um, so in order to produce a holistic solution uh, or a whole model solution so that it's not as dependent on curators. Uh, so you can see abstract 338a for greater details on this. <clears throat> for the optical results, we check them against the exophyella genome using the BLAST-P tool. Uh, we use a very conservative uh, expect value cutoff of 1e-30, e and we also added a percent positive substitution cutoff of about 60%. Uh, so of the 56 enzymes that Opsville suggested to add to our uh, exophyella model to fix metabolic gaps, 39 of these enzymes match to uh, an open reading frame in, exo in the exophyella genome using the BLAST-P tool. Uh, particularly, we noticed that six of the enzyme commission numbers uh, match only the previously hypothetical proteins and in the exophyella genome, uh, including this uh, enzyme 6412, which is actually necessary to make melanocoa, which is a precursor to GH and melanin synthesis. So this is a fairly important find um, from the melanogenesis point of view. <clears throat> Once we had reconstructed this genome scale model of metabolism, uh, which we ended up calling IEDE 2091. We performed a shadow price analysis on it to study the cost of the defensive pigments to the organism. So shadow price is uh, basically the change in the optimal value caused by changing uh, some variable by one unit. Um, it's usually used in the context of economics in order to indicate the cost of a good or service for which no market exists. So, oops, apologies there. This cartoon, uh, if you want to pause it and read the cartoon, uh, explains shadow price in an economic sense. So <clears throat> we ran a shadow price analysis 
for the three different um, melanins which exophyella can produce, as well as the three different carotenoids which exophyella produces. And notice that uh, depending on the carbon substrate on which you're growing exophyella, we have different shadow prices. Uh, what we also see that carotenoids are generally more expensive than melanins. And this seems odd to us because uh, melanins have more functions than carotenoids. There's nothing that a carotenoid can do that we know of that melanins can't also do. And melanins serve as the first line of defense deposited in the cell wall, whereas carotenoids are deposited in the cell membrane. So this led to two hypotheses. Uh, our first hypothesis is that carotenoids have some as yet undiscovered role in exophyella. And our second hypothesis is that exophyella engages in cost minimization of defensive pigment production to minimize its polyextremal tolerant trait cost. Uh, <clears throat> looking more specifically into melanogenesis and how uh, the melanogenesis of exophyella compares to that of humans, uh, we can see that part of the melanogenesis pathway, uh, specifically eumelanin production, is shared between humans and exophyella. And humans produce two different kinds of melanins, eumelanin and pheomelanin. And we can see from our modeling results that uh, pheomelanin could be inducible into exophyella because um, all the reactions which lead to fuel melanin from uh, dopaquinone, which is already produced by exophyella, are spontaneous reactions. Uh, so we should be able to induce that in exophyella. So we're hoping that uh, the melanogenesis pathways will be similar between the two organisms. Uh, we can also show that uh, for the tyrosinase enzyme, which is the key enzyme in melanogenesis, that the active sites are also very similar uh, between humans. So uh, these are different uh, human alleles for tyrosinase, and these are four different gene copies of exophyella, and this is uh, simply a cobalt alignment on the, um, uh, on the active sites. And we can see that several important residues are conserved such as residues that lead to oculocutaneous albinism, uh, such as shown by uh, these white boxes here. Uh, there are also two types of melanin that exophyella produce, which are not shared with humans. Uh, they are peel melanin and DHN melanin, and their synthesis pathways are shown here. So what we did in this um, particular work is we used the exophyella genome, as well as published genome scale aspergillus models, in order to produce a genome scale model of exophyella metabolism. This uh, model was then subjected to a shadow price analysis to better understand the costs and roles of uh, carotenoids and melanins in the uh, in polyextrema tolerance. Uh, and we also compared the melanogenesis pathways of humans and exophyella, as well as the uh, key enzyme tyrosinase uh, between the two species. And we're concluding that <coughs> exophyella would be a useful model system for modeling human melanogenesis. So currently, uh, our, our hypotheses are being tested in vivo by our collaborators in the Harris lab. And we're hoping to apply our model to studying exophyella metabolism under extreme conditions. And hopefully we will improve this model uh, soon and make it uh, more accurate. So I'd like to thank my advisor, Dr. Rajiv Saha, and our collaborators, uh, Stephen Harris and Jyoti Kumar, as well as our, uh, as well as uh, Rajiv's uh, faculty startup grants uh, from the University of Nebraska Lincoln for funding this work. Uh, this is the Systems and Synthetic Biology Laboratory at UNL, and I would like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this presentation. Uh, questions can be addressed to myself via the iPoster platform during the conference, via YouTube conference, sorry, YouTube comments, or via email 
uh, later. So again, thank you for your time to watch, and my name is Newton Schroeder. Uh, you can address questions to me.